This video is sponsored by Sweetwater. Hi there, Perfecto De Caster here and welcome to my channel. I hope you're having a great day. In this video, we are going to get really Santanic and dive into the guitar playing style of the legendary Carlos Santana. <laughs> Carlos Santana is definitely a guitar legend and one that is still active today. He has touched so many people's hearts with his singing lead guitar tone. And the way he projects his mind, his body and soul through his guitar has touched the hearts, not just across cultures, but across generations as well. This video will have three aspects. First, I will show you the one scale shape that will open up the world of Santana in your fingertips. Second, we'll dive into a study of the Santana guitar style. I won't show you specific licks, but we'll talk about the unique traits of the Santana guitar style. That way you can digest it and apply it into your own playing. And finally, we'll talk about the Santana guitar tone provided to us in this video by our good friends at Sweetwater. The guitar I'll be using is the PRS SE Santana, and that is plugged into IK Multimedia's Tone X, featuring the brand new Mesa Boogie reference collection. Specifically, the Tone X tone capture of the amp that Carlos Santana uses, the Mesa Boogie Mark I King Snake. Big thanks to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video and for being such a great friend and supporter of my channel. Affiliate links to everything that I used in this video will be in the video description. So if you're ready for new guitar day or new gear day or a combination of both, please use my affiliate links and uh, help us keep making these videos for everybody to enjoy. Thank you. Okay, jam time. Here is a quick improvisation over the first part of our lesson, the Dorian Blues scale shape. The Dorian blues scale is pretty much synonymous to the Carlos Santana sound. In fact, it is probably featured in every Carlos Santana uh, guitar video lesson here on YouTube. But for our purposes, let's call it Santanic scale number one. And it is very easy to get into. If you're used to playing the minor pentatonic, we only need to add a couple of notes. So here it is. It's a nice symmetrical shape that is the same across all the top three strings. Now aside from the shape, I also want you to think about the intervals that we are playing. Now our root is on the first string, and then the second, and then the minor third. And then on the next string, we have the fifth, the major sixth, and the flat seven. And then on the third string, we have the minor third, octave lower from the minor third earlier and then we have the fourth and then we have the flat fifth which is also called the blue note so this is home base 
And like I said, if you're used to playing the minor pentatonic, then you will have that automatic tendency to hit the lower octave root. Now the first jam uses a typical Latin rock chord progression, which is the one minor to the four major. In this case, A minor to D major, or sometimes D7. So with this chord progression, the automatic choice is the Dorian blues scale. Because it already has the notes of the chords in the progression. A minor. And D major. Or D7. And that makes it easy for you to switch back and forth between arpeggio bass playing to your regular blues stylings. Aside from switching back and forth between your arpeggio lines and blue slicks, you might want to lean on the half step notes as well. Doing so brings out more Carlos. This next part is sort of jumping ahead to the latter part of this lesson, but uh, I'm gonna do it anyway. So to extend the notes of this shape, try playing the same note on different strings. So for example, um, this flat five, you can play it on the second string, and that will give you this move. You can also get the second and play it an octave lower on the third string. And that will give you this option. You also hear that in Carlos's playing. Right, or the flat seven. Play the lower octave on the fourth string. This is easy because it's already part of the minor pentatonic scale. However, for extra sauce, you can play the major sixth an octave lower. Now, even with all these added notes, we still have some symmetrical shapes. So it's very easy to visualize, but you have to take note of where the roots are. Again, our root is on the first string and now also on the fourth string.
Okay, uh, I'm getting scared. Away. Santana is not just Dorian Blues. In fact, I would argue that he lives more in the harmonic minor playground, which is a, a dominant language in Latin music, not just Latin rock. And that is made obvious by the chord progression, usually a one minor, followed by a five seven or five dominant seven. In this case, uh, a minor and an E seven. However, we can still use the same symmetrical shape in a harmonic minor application. We just have to play it at a different part of the neck. So instead of having the root on the first string, we're going to play it on the second string. And then play the rest of the shape there. Now here are the intervals in this position. So root, second string, second, minor third, then first string, fourth, fifth, flat six. And then we also have the flat six octave down on the third string. And then we have the flat seven, and then we have the major seven. So we have the notes of A harmonic minor. However, we also have the notes of A aeolian. And if you've tried playing smooth, then this area is already familiar. Theory-wise, let's make up a name. I'm going to call this uh, Aeolian Harmonic. A Aeolian Harmonic. Since it has the flat 7 of the Aeolian mode, as well as the natural 7 of the harmonic minor. And with your arpeggio notes outlined, you can also go back and forth between that and your pentatonic stylings. <laughs> Like with the Dorian Blues, it's also effective to lean on the half-step intervals in the uh, Aeolian harmonic shape as well. Now the jam chord progression has A minor. F major 6 to E7. And the Santanic scale shape in the harmonic minor position also gives you those arpeggio notes. A minor, and then F6, and then uh, E7. Now 
we can also extend the shapes here by playing the same notes on different strings. Here is your major seven. Play it on the second string. But now I have... Of course, we have the flat six. And then we can also play the lower octave fifth on the third string. Now I have this. And then lower octave fourth. And then lower octave minor third. And then lower octave second. So the extended symmetrical shape we used for the Dorian blues earlier also applies to the Aeolian harmonic position. Now let's take a break from all this nerd speak and talk a little bit about the Santana guitar tone. The Carlos Santana guitar tone is easily one of the most recognizable guitar sounds ever. Now while the bulk of that sound can be attributed to his no choices and his fingers, the choice of gear will also put you in that correct mind space as well. When IK Multimedia announced the Mesa Boogie reference signature collection for Tone X, my eye immediately caught the King Snake amp in the promo photo. The King Snake is a Mesa Boogie Mark I combo covered in snakeskin Tolex, and it has been Carlos Santana's amp of choice for you know decades already. And as soon as I read the backstory behind the Mesa Boogie reference signature tone captures, I knew I had to make this video and feature the King Snake. Along with the King Snake, this Tone X collection also features four Mesa Boogie reference amps. These four reference amps are the benchmark to which all Mesa Boogie amps are measured up against. And it's not a far stretch to say that these are the amps that define modern guitar tone. I use IK Multimedia, Amplitube, and Tone X a lot in my workflow, so I am very happy that these tones are available <laughs> at my fingertips. So in this video, you will hear the King Snake in three scenarios. So for this segment, I am using the Tone X pedal plugged into that PRS Sanzera 20 in the back. And that is mic'd with a Sennheiser E906. With the Tone X ecosystem consisting of the Tone X pedal plus the Tone X app, you are now able to bring your tone captures and plug it into, you know, real world scenarios. The Mesa collection has two versions of each tone capture. One captured with a reference Mesa Boogie Cab and the other is amp only. That way you can use it in scenarios just like this. Load it into your Tone X pedal and plug it into the effects return of whatever amp you have in the venue. And you can load your Tone X pedal with as many tone captures as your heart desires and switch between them in a live setting. So here is my overdriven King Snake preset. <laughs> I also have a clean version of the King Snake. And also a Mark IV from the same collection. <laughs> Sounds great. Now Tonex made it very easy for me to dial in a very convincing Carlos Santana tone. All I did was bring up an overdriven capture of the Mesa King Snake. And then I pulled up Premier Guitar's YouTube channel and watched the Carlos Santana rig rundown. 
And from there, all I needed to do was take note of the amp settings in that video and apply it to my Tone X King Snake Tone Capture. Of course, with each setup, there are differences. However, the essence of the Carlos Santana tone is there. Nice, bold, and singing. <laughs> So here's what it looks like in the Tone X plugin. From what I could eyeball <laughs> in the uh, rig rundown video, the gain is set around eight or nine, and then bass is below five, around four or three or so. Mid is pushed up to around seven. Then treble is also brought down with the volume to taste. Now, of course, depending on the track, I can tweak these controls to make the guitar tone sit better, but this is the rough ballpark of the Santana tone. Now the Tone X Kingsnake does not have a reverb control, however, it's easy to add that within the app. So I just chose a spring reverb and set the mix to right around where <laughs> the rig rundown video had it, um, like 10, 11 o'clock or so. This is the same preset that I transferred to my Tone X pedal. However, since that setup involves a tube power amp and an actual live speaker uh, of the Sincero 20, I had to tweak things a little further just, you know, just to tame things down. The main difference is that with the Tone X pedal, it feels like it has more gain, but I suspect that has more to do with the actual uh, amplifier interacting with my guitar's pickups. Now my third setup consists of the Tone X King Snake Capture being used in an Amplitude preset. So using Tone X in Amplitude gives you a lot more flexibility as far as signal routing goes. Because in this Amplitude preset, I actually have two legendary amplifiers that are linked to Carlos Santana. The first amp is the Tone X King Snake, and the second amp is a Tone X Dumble. And like with the King Snake, I took the rig rundown dumbbell amp control settings and applied it here as well. And this is the tone. <laughs> Now, according to the rig rundown video, there's really not much to the Santana tone apart from these legendary amps. Just a little bit of reverb and running into some 4x12 cabinets, which you can see right here. Now, the best part of using Tone X within Amplitude is being able to add more stuff <laughs> in front of it, like fun pedals. So in this preset, I have a diode overdrive that I can kick in whenever I need to. Without. It still has the Santana Sonic character, but with a little extra bite. Now the final piece for the Santana tone puzzle is the guitar. Now in the jam tracks, I used a PRS SECE24, and pretty much any dual humbucker guitar will do the job. However, I will confess that I delayed the production of this video to wait for this beauty right here. When I told our friends at PRS that I was filming a Santana guitar style lesson video, they went above and beyond and sent over the latest version of the SE Santana. Beautiful. Now, aside from the painfully obvious, with this being the Santana signature guitar, an important part of the Santana tone lies in this guitar's construction, particularly the scale length. So the Santana signature guitar has a scale length of 24 and a half inches, which is shorter than the Gibson scale length. The shorter scale length gives it a nice and punchy tone, which makes it unique and different from any other guitar on the market. Affiliate links to everything that I used in this video will be in the video description. So if you are ready for new guitar day or new gear day or a combination of both, please use my affiliate links and uh, help us keep making these videos for everybody to enjoy. Thank you. Okay, now let's break out of the box and extend the fretboard range of our Santanic shapes. And that is the reason why I outlined the interval names of each note within the shape. Now we already did a little bit of extending earlier, so we are going to go even further. So with the Dorian Blues, our initial position in A minor is in the fifth fret area. 
And in learning the Aeolian harmonic position, we know that these three notes are found on the second string up here. So we have two options. We can play the Dorian blues position here, and then move up to the 10th fret area and play the same shape, but avoid the intervals that are not in line with Dorian blues. So. So what I did was instead of playing the same shape up here, I avoided the flat six and the major seven, giving me this sort of truncated, you know, shape. That way I'm still in uh, Dorian blues. And that is a good approach. The second option is to tweak the scale shape in the 10th fret area to fit the Dorian blues intervals. So we have root, second, minor third, fourth, fifth, and then we can add the flat fifth. So that is our the blues in Dorian blues. Flat seven. And then major six instead of the minor six. So there we go. <laughs> and we can even extend that even further. So again, one, two, flat three. Four, flat five, and five. And then major six. Move this up. Flat seven. And octave root. Fifth, octave lower. And then that symmetrical shape. Four, flat three, two. Let's apply that with Santanic scale number two, Aeolian harmonic. So, let's bring this down to the fifth fret. So this is the same root, second, third. Then we gotta add the, the major seven. Go there. And then flat seven. And then instead of the major six, we use the flat six. Okay, so instead of this, go. And then fourth. Minor third, flat third. Second. And then root. Major seven. So tweaking the intervals according to what you need widens your fretboard playground in both Santanic scales.
Now let's get into the ultimate extension of the Santanic scale. And I'm just gonna call this the Super Santanic. So in this scale, we're taking the notes of the Dorian Blues and the Aeolian Harmonic and mashing them together. <laughs> Again, to make a Super Santanic scale. So we'll start down here, root, second, flat third, fourth, flat fifth, fifth, flat six, major six, flat seven, major seven, root, and keep going. Now the most interesting thing about this hybrid scale is the chromatic walk up from the fourth degree back up to the root. But this is also a staple of Latin music. That is where this sound comes from. And... But of course, musical taste should always dictate how you approach this scale shape. It's not enough to just play the notes of the shape in succession like an exercise. Yeah. The jam track for the Super Santanic scale harkens back to the Santana Woodstock era. This is basically a vamp in A minor. And in it, you can pretty much play and improvise whatever you want. You know, take risks, explore the scale. Imagine dropping acid and fighting a king snake of a guitar neck. <laughs> Okay, there you have it. I had a lot of fun getting Santanic with all you guys and diving into the world of Carlos Santana. Again, big thanks to Sweetwater for sponsoring this video and for being such an awesome friend and supporter of my channel. As always, affiliate links to everything that I used in this video will be in the video description. So if you're ready for new gear day or new guitar day or both, please use these links to go shopping and help us keep making these videos for everybody to enjoy. I really love making these guitar player stylistic study lesson videos. So if you have a guitar hero in mind that you want me to cover for the next one, please put your requests or suggestions in the comment section and I'll get right to it. And of course you have to subscribe and ring that bell. That way you get notified whenever I put out a new video. YouTube thinks you're gonna like this next video, so click here to watch. Then go grab your guitar and play something. You all know the drill. Practice makes perfecto.